Hello, I'm Pete Lockett. Welcome to my new series, Pop Go The Bongos. So in this series, we're gonna look at the, the bongos. Now for me, it's one of my much loved instruments. I find so many uses for the bongos in it, so many different kinds of work, you know, pop sessions to, you know, my collaborations and so many different applications um, for the instrument. It's actually a very ancient uh, instrument. I mean, you can go right back, you know, way back when and to whichever country in the world you like, and you're gonna find a similar set of drums to the bongos as in, um, you know, a pair of drums that are played, um, you know, in, in quite a simple fashion, um, such as the Nakara from, uh, you know, India or some of the bongos you find um, across the Middle East and, and all over the world. Um, the ones we're going to be looking at specifically are these uh, bongos, which um, are based on the, the Cuban style of bongos, which um, is you know the most articulate and uh, formalized um, style of bongo playing um, that, that you find nowadays. Now, we're going to look at a slightly different uh, application for the instrument, hence pop go the bongos, um, because we're going to be looking at kind of non-traditional applications, so how one can begin to use the instrument um, in different types of music, such as pop or rock or you know whatever uh, music you play, um, without having to feel that you need to know, you know the ins and outs of the traditional music. Of course, it's going to be a great benefit to learn the, the exact details um, of any particular tradition, but um, it's also good to keep a free mind and a, you know, an open mind, uh, free approach to um, how you can use the instruments uh, other than that. So the drums themselves are very simple in terms of, of construct. We have two, uh, two drums. We have the uh, large drum and the, and the small drum. Um, the macho and the embra, they're called. Um, and it's, it's very simple. It's two wooden shells um, and, uh, you know, a kind of free-floating type mechanism which consists of, of two uh, metal, metal hoops uh, and four tuning bolts for each, for each drum. Um, now, traditionally, the... the um, would have been animal uh, skin used for the drums, um, and the drums are tuned really high, so it kind of adds a lot of a lot of uh, um, you know work for the for each gig because you've got to crank the drums up and tune them down, 
um, for each for each performance or each time you use the drums, particularly in climates um, where you know it might be hot or, or humid, and you know the weather will change, and suddenly um, they'll you know, the drums will split, which <clears throat> isn't something you want to, to happen. And it makes a massive noise if you leave a, a bongo or even a conga cranked up high, and you forget, and it pops, the skin pops. It's like a you know in like a, a sort of gunshot going off. It's really uh, phenomenally loud uh, sound. So. As I say, the construct is, is very simple. We've got the skins. Um, the new um, sort of variation for the skins are the, are the skins that you can now get from companies such as, as, Re as Remo. And, you know, the, the work that they've put into developing the different heads um, are pretty, pretty amazing. Um, there's a new uh, drum head, <clears throat> which is called the tucked drum head, which you can see is kind of made not in the same way as a, a drum set drum head would be made in that you'd have the hoop and the you know the skin going into the hoop and and you know glued or wh whatever system is done this is very much is you can see it's very much like a like an actual um, you know drum head that you will find made with with animal skin in that um, you'd put the skin over the drum you'd put the metal hoop on then you'd bend the skin underneath the rim and then you try and tune it up and then you cut off the you know the excess skin it's got a bit of a process so these skins they're pretty thick and, and durable and um you know for me it's the ideal alternative because you can get the drums sounding you know kind of how you like and and you know you're pretty safe the other thing about it as well is is in the recording studio if you need to drop in and you know the climate has sort of changed then you'd be dropping into the middle of a track and the tuning of the drums could be uh, slightly different of course there are other drum companies that that make uh, you know drum heads like this but this is my my preferred uh, choice now Tuning the drums is something that sometimes people um, don't always do. Uh, they're kind of sometimes scared of it because you actually have, need to be quite aggressive with the tuning. When you buy the drums, you know, you might find drums that are quite low in pitch like this or even, or even lower. Um, you actually need to, you know, tension them a lot higher than this. There are um, a couple of alternatives. You can use uh, a regular tuning spanner that you might get with with the drums, um, and just turn you know you know clockwise to to uh, make the drum higher or anti-clockwise to lower the pitch. I prefer to use something like this, like a good you know heavy duty socket wrench, because it, it takes the work out. And the other thing with sometimes with using the spanners is when you when you're coming round. Sometimes the, the, it can slip off and you can kind of hurt yourself um, with doing that. So I would recommend getting some sort of socket wrench. I mean, they're available from any you know, DIY store. This one is actually a drum one. You can fit a drum, uh, drum normal, regular drum set lug on the end. So it's kind of multi-purpose uh, in that sense. So with the tuning, you want to just start in one place and just do you know, a quarter of a turn or two turns on the on the socket wrench, quarter of a turn of the, and you just slowly go round, and you know, let's see what difference, you know, that minimal bit of tuning has, has made. It will be a little bit, you can begin to see it's going up. It's not quite so necessary to do in the same way we do with drum set in doing opposite. So this lug and then that lug, that lug and then that lug. It's actually fine because of the thickness of the head and the way the drums are constructed. It's actually fine to sort of go round in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. So I'm going to do a, a couple more turns on this drum. Now, what might happen when you're doing this is you might get some loud popping sounds. Not as loud as the gunshot mentioned earlier, but loud all the same. Don't, don't worry about that. See, now we're getting up nice and high. Don't worry about the popping sounds. You know, it's absolutely fine. That's going to happen when, you, when you're tuning a, tuning a drum up. I'm just looking at the high drum at the moment. Get that nice and high. Another two. These skins can go under an enormous amount of tension. Although obviously if you carry on forever, then you're gonna split it. Now go higher than that. What you really want, I mean the ideal sort of bongo sound is, is like a, almost like a high, high wood block. It's that high. What you don't want is a really muddy sort of sound. 
although in the studio, you know, you might have, you know, some different tracks. You might do a low track and a high track. So you could tune the bongos down and use them in a musical way in that sense. It's actually quite... You know, you can see I'm putting a lot of effort into turning it. It's actually, especially as you get tighter and tighter, it becomes, you know, really quite... Uh... Now, that's the sound. That's the sound that we're looking for. That really high, really crispy sound. Actually, the, the, the low drum's not far off where it, where it should be. But, you know, the way it might be, you know, when you get the drums from, uh, from the store, you know, you might find that they're tuned down here. And obviously these two tones won't work together. It's horrible. So, you know, I think uh, just slightly higher from where it was. So I tuned it down three. So I'm going to do four turns on each lug. The other thing to be careful of is that sometimes there's oil and stuff like that on, on some of the lugs, so you don't want to kind of get that on your, on your clothes, or your hands, in fact. So now you can see we've got a really cool... You can really see really high and, and you know, nice meaty low sound. The low drum is not nearly as hot, as much tension as the, as the high drum because it would just get a little bit like pingy and thin uh, in sound. <clears throat> so the holding, is, they're a little bit awkward. We do have um, options such as uh, bongo stands, which uh, you know can be useful for a multi setup. You might have some congas and you know different different things, um, and you know want want to put that in a standing setup, for example. The preferred um, position for me is sitting. Um, and holding them uh, kind of more in the kind of traditional format. The awkwardness is, you know, the lugs can be a little bit painful uh, in your legs, and, and some of the drums can be, you know, quite heavy. These drums aren't too heavy. These are the Remo um, Valencia uh, drums, which are pretty cool, um, and they're not they're not too they're not too heavy. So, but what you want to do is try and fit this lug here in the crease of your leg. So the the bongos are kind of slightly at this angle. I'm exaggerating it just to show. But, uh, you know, you kind of got them like that. And your feet, you know, we all love penguins. So if your feet can uh, look somehow a little bit like uh, a penguin's feet in that, in that manner, they kind of, uh, if I show the camera over here, we kind, of, um, we kind of got them sort of at this angle. Um, for me, I, I like the heels slightly off the ground. Um, and not too much tension in, in squeezing the drums with your legs because, you know, it can, you know, become quite uncomfortable. Uh, even leading to uncontrolled tremors, God forbid. So once you're comfortable with the, with the drums, um, you can begin to look um, at, the, at the different sounds um, that we have uh, available. Now, this series is really going to start from the beginning and, and we're going to start with some you know the, the very simple basic sounds now to begin with we're just going to look at sounds on the high drum the high bongo and we're going to look at accented and muted high tones so basically you're going to strike for the high tone you're going to strike right near the rim of the instrument um, there's two choices. I tend to use my my first finger. It's just kind of a style that I've uh, you know moved in towards. It gets a really really staccato and and pure tone. Traditionally, the uh, bongo player would use the tip of all three fingers. I use the tip of just one finger. It's much more staccato and it's just something that, you know, in actual fact, in a lot of sessions, I've kind of given people the option and they've said, actually, we prefer that type of sound in a non-traditional uh, setting, of course. So, this sound we can have as an accent or a touch. 
And the first set of examples we're going to look at look merely at the accents and the touches. Now, the only difference between the two is the, dif the distance that the hand travels. So, there's the, the touch stroke. And what you can do is just begin experimenting with both of those sounds. The touch, see it's very gentle, and the accent. As we move over to the examples, I'm going to switch to these bongos, which have the fibre skin head. I find they're, they're pretty cool heads um, for sessions. These are the slightly cheaper uh, range of drums, the Crown bongos, which are a little bit lighter than some of the other drums, the Valencia and some of the drums that other companies have. So we're going to start looking at our touch and uh, accented strokes. And if we look at example one, we have accent, touch, touch, touch. Three, four, and. Now we're only going to be looking at, to begin with, accents for the right hand. It's very important to keep all of the notes very uh, evenly distributed and regular and smooth. Um, it doesn't want to be, you know, sort of uh, jagged and, and, and awkward. So it's really important to practice with a metronome and keep everything, um, you know, neat and, neat and tidy, even for these simple beginning exercises. Let's look at example two, three, four, and. Notice that it's very, very even and that the, all of the touch strokes are kind of at one level and all of the accents are at another level. And everything is very smooth. And remember that the differenti differentiation between the accents and the non-accents is the distance that the hand travels to make the pattern. We've come from here for the accent and from here we're doing the non-accent. Let's look at example three. Three, four, and. Example four. Three, four, and. Example five, which is the same as example four, but with the accents coming in the middle of the bar. Three, four, and. Example six, we've got one accent in the pattern. Three, four, and. So notice that we've got a, a big period there of non-accent touch strokes, and I've got to re-emphasize, we've really got to keep those very smooth. So we're going to move on to example seven, 
And now we're going to be, begin to incorporate accents with the left hand. Now, the important thing is with this is that the accents with the right hand and the accents with the left hand are equally, uh, you know, equal volume. Three, four, and. Example eight, three, four, and. Example nine, three, four, and. Example 10, 3, 4, and. Example 11, 3, 4, and. Example 12, 3, 4, and. Example 13, 3, 4, and. Example 14. Now all of the left hand accents in this pattern um, are, are sounded. Three, four, and. Example 15. Three, four, and. Example sixteen. Three, four, and. To summarise some of the main important parts with the accents, it's really important that the right and the left sound identical and that the right and left touch strokes sound identical as well. So work through those examples and uh, I'll see you next time and we'll move on to some different patterns and incorporating the uh, larger drum into some of those patterns.